Hi guys. What are your main concerns when you buy your car? Style? Color? Fuel efficiency? Engine power? The purpose of this video is to provide secret tips helping you choose a good car. The videos in the current website give you various knowledges mostly about working principles of car components and systems, vehicle dynamics, electric vehicles, and etc., which are not the knowledge to choose a good car for you. However, what I'm trying to show in my videos is about secret tips to choose a good car. A good car is the car which has maximum performance with minimal weight, keep that performance for its lifetime, also, should be maintained with minimal cost and get better with time. Here, the types of performance will be safety, drivability, ride, handling, durability, NVH, fuel economy, aerodynamic performance, etc. Minimum weight can be achieved by optimum design factors, weight distribution, structure optimization. The maintenance cost of the car should be minimal. The details of this are that the replacement cycle of consumable parts should be long, insurance premiums should be low, taxes should be low, and repair costs should be low. Lastly, a good car is a car whose performance gets better and better as time goes by, as the assemblies develop to their optimal state and exhibit the best performance. If you continue watching my video series from now on, you can develop your ability for choosing a good car. Areas of car design can be classified as package, style, safety, chassis, body, interior and exterior, and finally powertrain. Among them, the most important foundation of car design is package design because once it fixed so did the CG location and weight distribution. More importantly, it should be fixed in the earliest stage of new car development cycle. Otherwise, it is difficult or impossible to change package design in the middle or final stage because it takes too much time and cost. Packaging is a space designed to allocate corresponding spaces to car components and systems in the total space of a car. The most important area of car design is weight engineering. You will recognize the importance of weight engineering in the series of my videos. There are two main design factors in weight engineering, first one is the location of center of gravity, CG, and second one is the distribution of weight. Let's get our journey start with weight engineering. Please remember, center of gravity and weight distribution tells majority of the car performance. Let's begin with simple terminologies. Let's call the location of center of gravity as simply CG. CG is the origin of coordinate system. Z-axis is vertical axis which goes vertically upward. Y-axis is lateral axis which goes from right to left. X-axis is longitudinal axis which goes from rear to front. You can make sure this in an easy way. First, use your four fingers without thumb. Then, make those four fingers a fist with directing your four fingertips from positive x-axis to positive y-axis, and with your thumb sticking up. Then, the direction your thumb points to is positive z-axis. Vehicle dynamics can be classified as longitudinal dynamics, lateral dynamics, and vertical dynamics. Longitudinal dynamics studies a car movement when it moves in a straight line. Corresponding areas of vehicle performance are acceleration, braking, and ride comfort. Lateral dynamics studies a planar car movement when it drives on the road surface like driving in a turn. Corresponding areas of vehicle performance are handling, steering, and ride comfort. Vertical dynamics studies vertical movements of a car. Corresponding area of vehicle performance is ride comfort. Let's learn some terminologies related to car dimension. The distance between front wheel center and rear wheel center is a wheelbase. The distance between the center line of front left tire tread and the center line of front right tire tread is front wheel track. Similarly, the distance between the center line of rear left tire tread and the center line of rear right tire tread is a rear wheel track. Every single force of the car passes through the contact patch existing between the tire and the road surface. Traction force braking force, cornering force, vertical force, and even aerodynamic force pass through the contact patch. If we understand every force on the tire contact patch of each wheel, that will help you drive your car safely and efficiently and easily understand almost all of drive techniques of racing driver. 
Here, let's understand the role of friction coefficient mu of tire. This figure shows the bottom view of the tire contact patch. Internal pressure of front part of tire is higher than that of rear part in the direction of tire movement. Therefore, tire contact patch front is slightly wider than tire contact patch rear. Let's define Fz is vertical load on the tire. Fx is maximum acceleration force and mu is the friction coefficient of tire. Then, maximum acceleration force Fx is determined by tire friction coefficient mu and vertical load Fz as the well-known equation here. In other words, the larger tire friction coefficient and vertical load can make the bigger maximum acceleration force. If engine torque creates bigger force than this maximum force, wheel spin happens without making traction force and the engine inefficiently loses its power in the air. So, tire friction coefficient of good car should be larger as long as it does not affect fuel economy. We need minimum equations to understand vehicle movements. But, before that, let's define some dimensions here. L is the wheelbase and LF is the distance from CG to front wheel center on the X coordinate and LR is the distance from CG to rear wheel center on the X coordinate. Finally, H is the height of CG, which is the vertical distance from the road surface. M is vehicle mass and G is gravitational acceleration. The weight of car W can be described as equation W equals mass M multiplied by gravitational acceleration G. Let's think about the static weight and reaction force. Assuming that front weight is evenly distributed into two front wheels and rear weight is also evenly distributed into two rear wheels, the normal forces acting on the front and rear wheels can be represented as shown in the figure. FZF is the reaction force for one of front wheels and FZR is the reaction force for one of rear wheels. It's high time to talk about the weight transfer. But, before explaining the weight transfer, I will give you a tip how to feel the weight transfer by the example of a bicycle. Remember again every force pass through tire contact patch. Suppose that you suddenly stop your bicycle by braking on the way of constant speed drive on the straight lane. Then, you can feel the longitudinal forces generated on your hands. Also, you can feel the vertical forces pressing down front tire. Those forces are due to your weight only. You can feel more force at front tire than that at rear tire and you will feel your body try to go forward continuously. This is the way you can feel weight transfer by yourself. Reaction forces of two bicycle tires shown as red arrows are longitudinal reaction forces and shown as blue arrows are vertical reaction forces. As you can see, those forces are due to your weight plus bicycle weight and front ones are larger than rear ones. Now, you are ready to understand the weight transfer in a car. Now, let's think about accelerating a car with acceleration A. Please remember every force pass through the tire contact patch. As you can see in the figure, acceleration forces longitudinally act on the tire contact patches while CG location of a car is higher as much as H from the road surface. Therefore, acceleration forces from tire contact patches generate the moment with moment arm length H at the CG location. This moment decreases the normal forces of front wheels and increases normal forces of rear wheels. We call this effect as weight transfer. The above description can be expressed as three equations on the upper left of the screen. Combining these together and arranging the front wheel acceleration force and the rear wheel acceleration force, we can obtain the two equations on the lower side. Here, the acceleration has a positive value during acceleration and a negative value during braking, so it is expressed as an absolute value in the weight transfer equation. At this time, let's think about weight transfer when braking a car with deceleration A. Once you understood weight transfer for accelerating a car, you can easily understand it for braking a D. Weight transfer at acceleration has similar force and moment pattern to the parked car on the upward slope. It gets smaller on the front wheel and larger on the rear wheel. 
transfer at acceleration has similar force and moment pattern to the parked car on the upward slope. It gets smaller on the front wheel and larger on the rear wheel. At this time, let's think about weight transfer when braking a car with deceleration A. Once you understood weight transfer for accelerating a car, you can easily understand it for braking at deceleration A. The principle is the same, but in the braking, the forces on the tire contact patch is opposite to those of acceleration. Weight transfer happens from rear wheels to front wheels. As you can see in the figure, Braking forces longitudinally act on the tire contact patches while CG location of a car is higher as much as H from the road surface. Therefore, acceleration forces from tire contact patches generate the moment with moment arm length H at the CG location. This moment decreases the normal forces of rear wheels and increases normal forces of front wheels. Weight transfer at braking has similar force and moment pattern to the parked car on the downward slope. It gets bigger on the front wheels and smaller on the rear wheels. Now, we can understand the weight transfer. It always happens when you accelerate or brake. Other ways of weight transfer? It also happens by steering your car or by aerodynamic force. But, I will cover that topics later. What I like to say in this video is the weight transfer sensitivity. Let's define the weight transfer sensitivity, SW, as the ratio of CG height H to wheelbase L. At the constant acceleration, the bigger the weight transfer sensitivity causes the larger the weight transfer quantity. In the extreme case, assuming that CG point is just on the road surface, weight transfer components go to zero because CG height, H, is zero. Then, there is no weight transfer at any level of acceleration. Now, let's think about two cars having different dimensions. There are two vehicles as you can see. The weight of each vehicle is the same. Car weight is W equals MG. The car on the right has two times higher CG and two times smaller wheelbase than that of the car on the right respectively. Weight transfer of the right car increases four times compared with the left car at the same acceleration as shown in the bottom of slide. That means the stability of the car in the right is worse than that of the car on the left. The graph shown here tells us the relation between the weight transfer ratio and the ratio of CG height to wheelbase, which we defined as weight transfer sensitivity. Green shows the result of accelerating the car to 19.6 meters per second square. Red is for 9.8 meters per second square and blue is for 4.9 meters per second square. The green and red accelerations are hard to come by in real cars, but they are used for explanation with a simple example. You can make a car more stable by reducing CG height and increasing wheelbase. Unfortunately, you cannot increase wheelbase too much because you end up with other performance values deteriorating. Examples of those performance values can be turning radius, ground clearance, steering agility, etc. The CG height can be lowered if the package design is good for the vehicle and each system. Here we have summary. Weight design tells majority of the car performance. Weight transfer in acceleration or brake is proportional to the ratio of CG height to wheelbase. The larger the tire friction coefficient, the better the performance, as long as it does not affect fuel economy. The lower the CG height, the better the performance. Those conclude this video. Next video will explain why I insist the lowest CG height in longitudinal dynamics. See you next video. Goodbye guys.